<laughs> okay, I'm in the crawl space. So, I'm trying to fix some plumbing. This guy, this house has a line that's cut off. So, we're going to rehook it up. The shower's cut off. And what I'm planning to do is put this in here. So, I dry fit it to see where my cut's going to be for breaking the water line. Right here. And I don't know if you've seen one of these jaw cutters like this. There are different names for them. C cutters get it snug in here and they're to buy that item is about 10 bucks you know now I want to make sure that it's inside the pipe here by cut I don't know if you see what I'm doing I'm just eyeballing it now another thing is look I've got a lot of flex here on this one and on this one a little bit so you gotta follow this any anybody can do this cutting at least if I had a bigger jaw cutter, it acts, a lot of times they don't fit around. And yeah, this little one's harder. You see where it's got a little score here? Meaning, I, I check to see that it's not right or left, that it's right on target. Okay, and then each time I turn this a little bit clockwise, and I see this is gonna be a nice, easy cut. Each, each time I run it around, sometimes I run it around twice, so it's a little easier. Now, you see I'm starting to get a score in there, not very much. Just turn that thing, I'm just giving it a quarter turn. And I'll run it around twice. Now there's going to be water in here. Don't forget to turn the water off <laughs> before you do something like this. I'm doing the same thing over and over again. I'm starting to see a very little bit of depth there. And it's... Now... Now, look, I'm not directly under it, but that way, <laughs> when water comes out, I won't feel like a total idiot. There it is. I'm just going to let it drain a little bit. I, I, I can't get a drink of water here. It's fresh water. I mean, that's just so it doesn't splurt at me. I'm, you, you know, whenever you're doing plumbing, you're going to get wet. <laughs> There's no avoiding it. It turns real easy because it's ready to snap. There. There we go. Now. Now look, I got a lot of play in this one here. So I have to determine where I want it. Look look here where I've got a lot of slop here. Either way. Okay, now. I'm going to dry fit everything before I make my next cut. So basically... I'm putting a, a new T in here to connect. I'm just, like I say, I'm just dry fitting it. Now, if you cut these off with a hacksaw, oh man, you ain't never going to get anywhere. Okay. And like I say, I have to figure out what's going to work for me. Now, there's two types of T's. There's a slip T like this. And like I say, I'm going to try to figure it out what's going to work for us here. This guy cut this one off with a hacksaw, not using what I used. Because of that, I'm going to try to clean it up. I don't know if you've seen this tool, but it's got two 
inserts in it for a half inch pipe, three quarter inch pipe, and these are reamers here for half inch pipe and three quarter. And what it does is it takes and shines your pipe up a little bit, gets a little bit of the gunk off of it. Sometimes it deburs it. That's what I'm hoping for. Now, you know, in plumbing, it's very common to be in a situation where everything is so tight and it, uh, it's still draining water here, but it's not the end of the world. But to drain it, look, I'm pulling it down a little bit. I want to try to get as much water out of it as I can. Okay, and that's going to continue on for until the... Okay, I don't know if you can see what I've done, but I've cleaned that up a little bit. A little bit, and uh, try my elbow in there. And it just fits in there nice now. A little bit. There, beautiful. Now, if I make sure I have the slip. Sometimes it's kind of fighting them to get them pre-fitted. going up here, so that's not going to move very much at all. Now look, I'm a half inch off here. So that's, that's going to create quite a bit of a problem here. You know. It's very forgiving. It bends a lot. So. Now, see this column going up here? I'm going to go ahead and bend it a little bit. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not strong enough. Persuaded here. See up there, it's bending a little bit. Not much, but I think a hammer would be better. Okay, okay what I'm doing is I'm forcing it to line up somehow. Fight, fight, fight. <sighs> okay, so I'm not getting it too easy. I'm so close here, half inch, three quarters inch. Yep, there we go. <laughs> there. Okay, now this is called what, what I call dry fitting. Okay, now I need to match this. So I need one more cut there. And some people have all new tools. I got old tools, so these stick a little bit. Reset that. Okay. Now, it's always better to cut it long and fight it in and then to cut it short and not be able to do it. I'm doing the same thing I did before. And no, you don't want to cut both of them until you're ready for the second cut, if that's what you're wondering why you didn't. Everybody does things differently. Now, I'm doing the same thing, I'm repeating. Now, a very slight turn until I'm sure that it's lined up. I can say we're basically just doing the same thing. Now, on half inch pipe, this thing turns pretty good, but on three quarter inch pipe, it doesn't. So, give it a quarter turn there. 
spin it around again. On these, they're clockwise when it's facing you to tighten that up. But learning trades today, you know, you can learn how to do everything in plumbing by watching YouTube. Maybe not just our channel, but, you know, there's other channels out there. Okay, now I got that off. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. You can turn those both ways because that way you know you've got it pretty clean. Okay. Now I'm off a little bit. I'm just going to persuade this over by lining it up. I don't know if you can see where I'm a little crooked. Okay, now I've got that fitted in. This. Now everything's dry fitted. Now I'm going to take it all apart. And I'm, basically I need to get all that water out of the line because it's pretty hard to sweat. See, we're still dripping here. Dripping wet. And, swing in here at all. There we go. Take everything apart. I don't know if I cleaned that one part up or not. I don't think I did. Maybe I did. Okay, so now it's gonna take us about 10 minutes to get all the water out of the line. The very best way to do that is just wait and it'll all come out. Or, like I do a lot of times, I pull down on the pipe like this. Now, I'm lucky here because I have a valve right here close, just two feet away. So, you probably don't wanna know this, but this is another one thing I do. Get water out. As you know, I cleaned the pipe out, and this is drinking water anyway. See, I'm not getting it anymore, but I hear it, so I'm gonna blow it out too. Now, right here, I've got a drop. So I know this pipe is gonna stay good. 
on the other side. I know it only goes up to the sink, so I know this one's good. And this one only goes to here. So I like to try to get as much water as I can out. Water creates steam, and steam works against you when you're soldering. And yeah, you can pull on these pretty hard, it's not going to hurt anything. Look, look at the trick here, I just lifted this other end up. And that, of course, no-brainer. Believe me, if there's just a little bit of water in there, <laughs> you're going to have trouble. Now, I feel mostly out. Of course, my wife doesn't like this, but I always use my clothes for a tool. Dry this up. And... Now, I'm gonna put some flux. I have two or three old style, doesn't matter which one I use. And some people use a brush. You know, my brush may look old, but this is basically a wax, and it's got a little bit of metal in it. And you want to wax all these things down if you can get it to take it. It may not look like it, but yeah, we got some on. And what this does is it melts, and it, the, the copper replaces itself with this. You don't want to just do the outside. You want to do every bit of the job with this. So, okay, same thing. You know, I tested that with a wet fitting, but I'm going to pull a, bur a dry one out and use that. You just get them in there. Make sure you put a lot in there. You know. And I'm going to start reassembling this thing again. Now, that's actually working to make that work better. And um, I did buy a lot of fittings, so what I'm deliberately doing is I'm pulling out dry ones. Outside. Sorry, there's dead space, but you can use your finger and that doesn't hurt anything. Now, you already saw I did the inside of that one. Trying to get that to tighten up a little bit more, not much. And I got it. Okay, pretty much I'm ready to solder here. Of course, we're, this is more advanced than most people really want to take on. Gotta learn some place. Okay, next step, get a settling torch, you know, cheap one, 
and I've actually got two or three different kinds of solder with me, so I'm gonna see which one works for me. I get them all ready here by pulling that. Now you realize I'm doing this upside down. Of course, <laughs> you gotta be careful not to have a drip on you. Come on out of there, yeah. Okay, look, I got two different kinds ready. Now, the head here has not been tightened up yet. Look, I tighten it up. You're gonna hear the gas in a second. I don't know if you can hear it. And this is called a striker bar here. Okay, now, that's that's a nice flame there. Let me, I wanna be holding the solder. I like to try to use the fat one first. Now look, I'm over to the side here. It doesn't matter which one you do first or last, but you wanna make sure that you're not dripping solder on your hand here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna warm each side up a little bit and I, I, I will keep dabbing it on there once the solder starts melting because it touches the pipe then you're ready to go what you want to do is you don't want to melt the solder with a torch you want the pipe to make sure that the solder is melting and you'll know it it's just this is so easy look at that it's starting to work here it's Now, unfortunately, I got a little bit of water coming out. It's not the end of the world. It's gonna, it's gonna evaporate out. So I'm doing my high joints first. It doesn't really matter. If you know much about the flame, the tip of the blue is the hottest point. And you do not want to heat these pipes up till they're red, because the solder will just fall right out of them. I'm wearing glasses on purpose because I don't want anything to go in my eye. Quarter inch pipe takes a lot longer to warm up than half inch pipe. When that solder drops, then I think I'm ready. When there's water in the pipe, it's you, I'm just boiling it out, if you know what I mean. I'm forcing it to come out. I'm just fighting the water right now. So my pipe's not heating up is what's going on. I'm gonna try the other, uh, I'm gonna try the other knuckle just because I got too much water in there. You see the steam coming out? Good thing. but it's actually preventing my pipe from 
getting real hot. And if you guys don't know how to sweat pipes, there's fittings called, maybe they're called shark jaws or something. Another way to do it, but man, those are so often leak. I know I'm not getting it as long as I got that water coming out. No, my pipe's just not warming up. Well, basically, I'm, I'm gonna stop this a second, take it all apart again, and get it, try to work with that water. Okay. Well, I've made a couple of changes. Okay, well, look, over there, there was a valve way down here, and I actually had to use a wrench to tighten it up. It's never been closed, so that was causing me to get leakage. I'm pretty sure now I got a dry pipe. And, um, you know, maybe we're gonna do it right here. But what I did do is I got rid of the T. I'm just basically showing you basic soldering processes here. Now, I'm warming up both sides of the pipe. If you watch what I'm doing, I'm going back and forth. So they heat up kind of evenly. You see that wax is starting to bubble a tiny little bit? Now I'm going to touch this. I'm touching it to the pipe. That's what I'm looking for. And it should draw it in. There we go. Now look at how easy we're getting in. I think that's it. It doesn't hurt to use a lot of solder. Okay, that's my first knuckle. Now I'm going to do the second knuckle. That's the upside down one. It's not a big deal. But look, I've already got this elbow warmed up, so I'm going to the next one, and I'm starting to warm this other piece up here. Best part is I'm not getting any water dripping, finally. Okay. And like I say, I want to touch it to the pipe to make sure it's hot in. Yeah, there we go. Look, it's taking it in. Okay, it works its own way around. It, it, you don't have to go all the way around with the solder itself. Now, I'm doing the last one here. And if I don't get any water, which I better be good. It doesn't really matter what angle you're hitting this from, but I'm gonna move the torch and swap hands with my solder here. Be careful not to be underneath this thing. That solder. Whoo, you'll hear me scream if I find it. I'm going back and forth to both pipes, trying to get them evenly heated. Now, I think part of that was just the torch touching the solder. It's not hot enough yet. Like I say, the blue part is the hot part. Look down there where my solder's dripping. You get a little bit of steam down there because the solder's hitting the wet spot. Yeah, be careful. Okay, I think we're good. I want to make sure that be careful not to aim the torch to yourself. Not, not good, not good, not good. I'm going to hook this 
fatter like this for a better angle in there. Oh yeah, there it goes, there it goes. I know you can also see videos where a guy does this on a bench. Makes it a lot easier for you to understand what he's doing. Not our videos, but we're actually doing it on the job. There we go, we're done. Now, you've learned how to solder something. I'm gonna turn my torch off. Okay. I'm not turning the water on now because I've gotta run the other line. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about soldering. We're going to do the whole thing over again on the cold line.